Hey y'all, this is Paul C. Tarina here to talk today about some uh, implementation strategies, addressing some transitional difficulties um, that some of our people have had since beginning our program. And um, you know, so we have a, recently we have an SHT that's kicked off, and so we've got some questions and, and some some things around implementing food and you know timing of things and um, and I feel like this would be a good discussion for just about anybody to hear especially if you're trying to to transition over from not doing the right thing to something that looks real foodish and um, and we get these kinds of questions all the time every time we work with anybody and so um, I think the first thing that I just want to say is that uh, we are all about implementing this in a modern lifestyle and what we teach is really about a way of life for a lifetime. So one of the things that I feel like sets us apart from other programs out there is that we are trying to teach people life lessons. Like this is not a six or eight week program where we're basing success based on weight loss or inches lost. Um, you know, we're basing success on feeling amazing and also freedom. Like we want our people to have freedom from food for a lifetime. We want our people to have freedom from being neurotic about food for a lifetime. And that's the way that things sh should really be. Most of our veterans, once they've worked with us for a significant period of time, not only do they feel great and have optimal body composition and all the things that we're looking for from a program like this, but I, you know, most people would summarize their experience and, and the way that things are for them in the moment as just freeing. You know, it's, it's like it's hard to explain, but like the majority of our principles don't take much effort once you get through the transitional adaptation period. And, um, and so along those lines, we want to make sure that we're always being easy on ourselves and practicing love and kindness to ourselves. Um, we do not want to get stressed out about all this stuff. And that's not to say, you know, anytime you embark on something that's new and you're learning a new concept or a new skill, there's going to be a little bit of stress, a little bit of transitional difficulties and adaptation. But, but we want to have this background mindset that we're trying to make this work for a lifetime. And we want to be really easy on ourselves. And we want to follow the basic guidelines. That's it. You know, we don't need to get more complicated than that. So another concept to understand is that we're always looking for small incremental improvements. And so we always say that better is better. Better is better. It doesn't have to be a lot better. It can be just a little bit better. But if we feel just a little bit better, if we notice some changes, even if they're small changes, that means that we're doing something right and we're moving in a good direction. So we want to look for these small incremental improvements. We want to understand that a little bit better is better. Big better is better, but a little bit better is better. And throughout the entire process, we want to be easy on ourselves and practice love and kindness to ourselves. Okay. So what started this conversation is um, Adam Hockenberry came in and he was just about to go in and work, do a little workout. And he was just asking about like some things around meal timing and you know, am I eating enough or am I eating too much of this food? And should I be eating at this time? And what if I'm not hungry? Do I need to force myself to eat? And, um, and those are all great questions. And I think a lot of us go through a, a period of having questions like that, trying to get it right. Like we just want to get it right is really what it is. And we want to do it right. And my answer to him was basically, brother, just eat real food. Focus on being 100% real food and focus on our ideal day's meals concept, which is not having carbs in the morning, and then let the rest of it work itself out. If you feel like eating, eat. If you don't feel like eating, don't eat. Um, at this point in the game, it's not about fasting, intermittent fasting, skipping breakfast. What if I have this much cream? What if I have this many eggs this many days in a row? Can I eat too much bacon? And all that kind of stuff. You know, like over the long term, of course, we want to talk about broadening nutrient spectrum and getting a variety of foods and we want to experiment with fasting and space and where that space is um, but in the beginning it's really just about getting the basics right and the basics are 100 percent real food and not having carbohydrates in the morning okay now i'm also going to go through some questions though that were asked specifically from our facebook group so adam you know we had a great discussion and i hope that that answered your questions so don't worry about the timing and the spacing and the amounts. Don't worry about eating too much eggs or bacon because it's, it's perfectly fine, especially to try to get things right in the beginning. And if, if I didn't answer your questions, just let me know. Um, and so uh, the next question came from Kristen, and she asked about like um, appetite loss. And she said, is it normal for me to not be hungry like I used to or to not be as hungry and not want to eat as often? Yes, that is, <laughs> that's a clear indication, in our opinion, 
of um, the body starting to get nutritionally sufficient. And when the body gets nutritionally sufficient, it starts to send less hunger signals. That's what we talk about in our, our initial meeting when we talk about auto satiation, auto appetite regulating, regulating. When you eat the right foods, especially when you're eating healthy meats and fats, um, the body starts to send you signals of, I'm getting what I need, and so I'm not gonna make you as hungry as often. And so you may notice what appears to be like eating less food, definitely wanting to eat less often, and it's normal, it's great, as long as you feel good. You know, if you lose your appetite and then something else is happening in a bad direction, then maybe something else is going on. But I think that that's, that's normal and that is to be expected. Like, I just, I don't eat that often. I mean, when I eat, I eat great. And when I eat, I don't eat a massive amount of food, but it's, you know, extremely enjoyable. And if I had to compare what I was doing before to what I'm doing now, like I was eating a lot more often, like every three hours, two or three hours, and I was always snacking, and, and I just had to eat massive amounts of stuff to feel good. And it's just it's an indication the body's moving in a good direction. All right, um, now Joe had asked about how much nutrition can fat actually have, because we're always advocating eating healthy fats. And remember, our main healthy fats are gonna be real butter, coconut oil, olive oil for salads, and of course there's other things you can throw in the mix for a variety. Um, but then I think her husband had asked like, okay, this guy's telling you to eat fat and eat a lot of fat and eat fat all the time. It's like, how much nutrition is actually in fat? And that's a great question. I don't think I've ever had that question asked before. So um, first of all, fat plays a lot of different roles inside the body, beneficial roles inside the body. And I'm not gonna go into all those different roles right now, but the things that we're really interested in is number one, we're trying to train the body to use another fuel source, all right? We're trying, ideally, I wanna train my body how to tap into my fat stores. And when that happens, it's almost like you have this unlimited fuel supply for the body. That's another thing that will contribute to not being hungry that often. Um, and so your body really is using fat for energy and then you're eating food for nutrients to give the body what it needs to function and contribute to, to what makes this body and all the different processes inside the body. Um, so one of the main reasons that we eat fat with every meal, whether it's a little bit or a lot, is because we're trying to give the body an alternate fuel source versus being dependent upon glucose and sugar and starch and stuff like that. Um, now within fat, so we're also looking for specific nutrients to support anti-inflammation. So there's anti-inflammatory precursors in some fats. And a lot of the phospholipids in fats are used to create cell membranes, all of our cell membranes, even things that don't seem fatty like my nail cells and my hair cells. Um, they have a cell membrane that is made up of phospholipids. It's known as a bilipid layer. And so we need fat to contribute to building the body and we need fat to contribute to um, creating energy, this alternate fuel source. And then um, there's a lot of beneficial nutrients that are packaged in fat, you know, so, and it depends on the types of fats that you're consuming. They all have different profiles. Um, but some of these nutrients are also associated with what we call fat soluble nutrients. So if I eat fat with a food or a meal that contains fat soluble nutrients such as vitamins A, vitamin D, vitamin K, vitamin E, CoQ10, like there's other things that are fat soluble, which means it needs the presence of fat to be absorbed. So when I eat fat with these fat soluble nutrients, I absorb the fat soluble nutrients. And if I don't eat fat with those nutrients, then I don't get those nutrients, they get excreted out of my body. And so this is one of the reasons that we always say, eat fat with every meal, because I'm trying to train my body to use fat for fuel, and I'm trying to train my body to assimilate these all important fat soluble nutrients. And depending on the fat that I consume, those fats are gonna contain other nutrients that my body can use to build itself. Um, and then there's other nutrients contained in it too. So I hope that answers that question. Um, Holly has asked, how long between the last meal and bedtime? So meaning, like how close to bedtime can I eat? Is there a problem with it? Um, I would say that that's uh, something that is gonna be determined by experimentation. So um, in some of our advanced programs, we actually, um, recommend or schedule people uh, doing what we call fasted sleep, which means that we would stop eating two hours prior to bedtime to see what kind of an impact that has on sleep patterns. And what we found was that half the people that did that slept better and half the people didn't notice anything. So I personally do most of my feeding close to bed, you know, like, like uh, just before bedtime, maybe 30 minutes an hour before bedtime. Um, but some people don't feel good with having uh, food in their upper GI when they're, when they're sleeping. So um, when you think about it, digestion is a parasympathetic mode, autonomic system uh, operation, meaning that the body has to be in a calm and relaxed state. And the time that the body is in a calm and relaxed state uh, to, the, to the most 
degree that it can be is going to be when you're sleeping. So I would say that sleep is actually an ideal time to digest food, but some people are going to notice that their sleep is disrupted. So the big takeaway from that is there is no right answer. It's very bio-individual and you just have to experiment. So I would go through, um, we recommend a minimum of a week, but maybe two weeks, um, but a minimum of a week where you eat close to bedtime and track your sleep, you know, just see how you feel when you wake up in the morning. Um, and then go a week where you purposely eat, don't eat for two hours. Uh, space it out two hours okay so you have your dinner and then you have two hours and then you go to bed and that's enough time for the food to move from the upper GI into the small intestine okay um, Armando asks if I'm hungry should I snack or should I eat more at my main meals and that's a great question so what we'd say again is you want to experiment so um, first of all most of us are, are never really going to be truly hungry to where we're starving um, so, you know, hunger is a very subjective term and you really have to, we would recommend practicing awareness and just really, um, sitting with yourself for a moment, asking yourself, am I really hungry or is it because I've been stimulated by seeing something sitting out, you know? Um, so if I have a bag of almonds or, uh, some bacon sitting out and I can see it, like I'm gonna start to salivate cause I'm wired to eat. I, I really am. Um, so, and, and a lot of times like you're, hunger will pass. It'll, it'll come and go in waves and you can drink a little bit of water and, and next thing you know you're not hungry or you can occupy yourself with something else and you'll notice that you're not hungry. So, so there's a difference between really being hungry and then being triggered by something in your environment or maybe a thought of a food or something along those lines. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's not about like, is snacking good or bad? Um, because some meals may look like snacks. Ideally, what we want is a meal and then some space, and then a meal and then some space. In the beginning, you may need to snack in between your main meals because your body is transitioning from using glucose or sugar or starch to using this new fuel source. And so in that transitional period, it's trying to get energy from something, and so it's sending these hunger signals, and so maybe you do need to snack. But over the long term, ideally what we're looking for is probably about four, five, six hours of space in between meals or more. Um, so, you know, you could experiment with eating more to see if that helps with that space in between. But what we find is the more that the body understands how to tap into fuel, uh, fat stores, um, the less of a need for volume, you know, comes into play. So just like, you know, what Kristen had asked about not being hungry, not being hungry as often and not wanting to eat the same amount of food. Um, it almost becomes irrelevant about how much food you eat your main meals because whether you have a little bit or a lot, like your space is not dictated by how much food you eat. Your space in between meals is really dictated about how your body is able to tap into fat stores, if that makes sense, okay? So again, the, the answer to this is there is no perfect answer. It's very bio-individual. You can experiment with more food at your main meals um, to see if that makes you feel a little bit better and have a little bit more space in between your meals or you can focus on doing the same thing that you're doing and then maybe when you get hungry try to drink some water and see if it's just one of those little hunger waves that comes and goes or if you need to you can snack on something that's appropriate okay all right and then ashley asks can i eat meat at lunch what if i'm working out later in the afternoon do i need to worry about my nutrition midday um, and that's a great question, and it all ties back to um, most of us are going through a transitional period, you know, so the more adapt the body gets at tapping into fat stores for fuel, the more metabolic flexibility the body has, the more meal timing becomes irrelevant. So um, if I was working out late in the afternoon because I'm so adapted at this, um, I could fast all day long and go into my evening or afternoon workout and just have an amazing workout just like I would if I, it was in the morning or midday. And so meal timing is completely irrelevant, but in the transitional period, as your body's adapting, maybe you feel a little bit better when you eat some food closer to your workouts. And so what we'd recommend is, you know, ideally having about three to five hours of space between your last meal and your workout so that you're not digesting food at, in your upper GI as you're working out. Um, and then you have to experiment with what types of food that you eat before your workout. So again, an experiment might be for one week you have midday, if you're working out in the afternoon or evening, maybe midday you have something plant matter based with some healthy fat, you know, like a salad with olive oil or some vegetables with avocado or guacamole or something like that. And then for a week you're doing that and just seeing how you feel. And then the next week you want to add some protein in to see if having some protein makes you feel a little bit better or perform a little bit better. All right. So there's, cause there's a lot of things that could play into that. Maybe you're just not eating enough food in general and maybe you need to load up a little bit more on that midday meal, or maybe your body's just going through some kind of an adaptation period, okay? And I hope that helps, and if I'm not answering it to the degree that you need it, just let us know. 
All right, and then、um, Fab asks, "Do I need to eat based on my workouts, meaning more carbs、uh, on specific days or specific times, or more of some other macronutrients?" And I think her example was she noticed that,、um, and、uh, maybe I get this wrong, but you know she would eat more carbs days before certain training sessions, and then more meats and veggies on days before other training sessions. And again,、um, we we really just want to dial it back and just focus on just getting the basics right. If you just eat real food and you don't have carbs in the morning, then your training is going to be fine no matter what you eat. Okay, so if I have a day that I'm extremely low carb. And I eat meat and plant matter, and、um, then my performance the next get, day is going to be great because what we're talking about here、uh, partially is is muscle glycogen. Well, my body's priority is always keeping muscle glycogen stocked. So the only time that I'm going to run out of muscle glycogen is if I'm extremely low carb and pretty low protein for an extended period of time, like several days straight. Or if I completely fast for two days, then my body will start to blow through most of the muscle glycogen, and that's not an issue for most of us. You know, most of us, even if we're extremely low carb, we're still eating a significant amount of meat and a significant amount of plant matter, and so you're always going to keep those glycogen stores stocked. Okay, so so the answer to that is、um, you don't really have to plan macros around training necessarily, unless you're doing multiple metcons in a day or multiple conditioning sessions or something. Um, I think something that that works for most of us, if we like, if we want to try to cycle in and out of car- low carb and not low carb, would be on intense training days. That would be the days that you have some fruit and some starches and some sweet and starchy type things, right? And then days that you don't do intense training or you do some really low level training, then those would be days that you could experiment with being low carb. And again, I don't think it's it matters that you're catching it just before or just after or the day of or the day after or anything like that. I think it's just like something that gets you in this habituation of alternating things a little bit. All right. So again,、um, just eat real food. Just follow the basics. Maybe on days that you're training really hard, have a little bit of carbohydrates. For most people, that makes you feel a little bit better. Maybe on days that you're not training hard, minimize the carbohydrates. Or you can have carbs every day if you want to. Just you know, following our、uh, consumption guidelines.、So. All right, Fab. I hope that helps, and let me know if, if you need more information on that. And then Stephanie asks, should I eat three meals a day even if I'm hungry? And、um, we recommend when we're starting out that most people follow a three meal a day format. And the reason for that is that we want to maintain even blood sugar levels just in case someone has a tendency to go hypoglycemic because their body is so used to using sugar for fuel or glucose for fuel or starch or whatever. And、um, and and we feel like that works. You know, three meals: breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I'm trying to not snack in between, but if you need to snack, you can for sure, being easy on yourself. And、um, and we feel like that works for most people. Now, if you get to a point to where you feel like, you know, I, I I'm kind of forcing myself to eat this meal, and so like, is that really the right thing to do?、Um, you can definitely experiment with like a smaller meal that looks like a snack, or you can experiment with skipping the meal and see how you feel. And just have something on hand, just in case you feel a little bit lightheaded or dizzy or tired or something along those lines. So to answer your question, Stephanie, over the long term, meal timing becomes irrelevant. Meal amounts become irrelevant.、Um, really, we want to follow some kind of an intuition around it. But in the beginning, we feel like the three meals a day is a perfect format to maintain blood sugar levels, while at the same time giving you enough space that your body's tapping into fat stores. Okay. Um, a couple of other things: transitional difficulties, digestive issues. So a lot of people go through a constipation phase, or what feels like a constipation phase, when they transition to real food. This is perfectly normal. We have a lot of reasons for it, a lot of ideas around it. But the bottom line is, for most of us, it's a transitional thing.、Um, but there are some things that you can help、uh, facilitate moving things along a little bit better. And one of them is taking some quality. Upper GI supportive supplements. So if that's you, reach out to us because we've got some things that like they just work. You know, for some people, the day they start it, you know, things start to move. For some people, it takes a little bit longer.、Um, if you have other things like、um, heartburn or、um, or something along those lines, like some bloating, heartburn or around meals,、um, it's the same thing. Like your body, in order to digest real food, real food is extremely nutrient dense. And so, in that nutrient density, the body needs some strong digestive effort to break all that stuff down, which is a great thing.、Um, but some people have lost that capacity over years of doing something that would look inappropriate compared to what we recommend. And so, your body has to go through this recalibration period. 
and, um, and it's transitional, you know, but again, some digestive support might help you and might benefit you tremendously because we've just seen it work a lot. So, um, and then, um, other symptoms like, you know, in the transitional period, like headaches and some nausea and really low energy and just feeling like you're in a funk or something like that. Um, we talk about this at our main meetings. Sometimes let's just say that I haven't worked out in a year and I go in and I do a really, really hard CrossFit workout. I'm going to be sore for days, if not weeks. Um, so Working out is good for me and it's the right thing, but if I'm not used to it, then I can go through an adaptation period. Same thing with real food. If I'm doing the right thing, if it's different from what my body's used to, then I have to expect that I'm going to go through some transitional difficulties. And everyone's going to respond different to that. You know, that depends on how hardcore you're going at it. And we, that's why we recommend three meals a day, having carbs at night. Don't try to go low carb because that's not what this is about. Not right now. We do experiment with that. Um, but just stick to the basics and if you feel off, if you feel like you have a headache and low energy levels, just believe and trust and you're going to make it through it because we all do. We all go through those transitional periods and we all within three to five days, sometimes seven days, sometimes a little bit longer, you know, we, we see light at the end of the tunnel, the fog lifts, we start to have more consistent energy levels and we start to feel better. Okay. And, um, and I want to just wrap all that up with again. The point of this program is to teach you life skills for a lifetime. All right. You learn from us and you're going to learn what to do for the rest of your life. And we're going to be here to support you for the rest of your life because we're always going to be doing stuff like this. Um, in that process, you got to be easy on yourself, practice love and kindness to yourself, understand that the point of this is freedom and having fun with it and being easy and not getting neurotic and not you know, stressing about timing and amounts and should I do this? And what if I have too much of this? Like, forget all that. Just eat real food. Don't have carbs in the morning. Let the rest of it happen naturally and keep reaching out and asking questions because your questions benefit everybody else. All right. We love you guys so much. Let us know what else we can do to help you. Okay. Thank you so much.